G'day everyone, Richard Toswell, uh, Te Awa Awa. Just giving you another update on how things are tracking with the uh, Clover Troll and the management. And to sort of show people how, how it is that we're going about um, trying to increase our legume on our uncultivatable country up here in the, the Wairapa. So what I thought I'd try and do was just give you a snapshot of the place over the coming sort of 12 months and hopefully it can get a, a good appreciation of what the season's been like, how things are gone, how we've managed things, how we get to the final outcome and, and what it really looks like in terms of practical sense. I'm just going to flip the camera around now and um, just give you a bit of an idea of how things are looking. We're end of February, been a humdinger of a summer, fantastic uh, rains early on a huge amount of clover through the spring now we just have this challenge in front of us which is all about just trying to get the feed under control so that we can get plenty of clover germination so here we are in the uh, Nikau paddock just next to our trial area where we tried the variety of different clovers I've just found a uh, patch of burrs from our clover that have set over last season so these are all the burrs that have been dropped and here they are all packed with seeds ready to germinate over the next few seasons so just remembering not all these will be viable in the first season but they will drop their seeds into our systems those are the seeds if you want to get any of these little burrs open them up see what's inside but that's what you'll find those are your seeds and that's next season and uh, beyond production here we are, uh, end, end of February. This is the Nikau trial paddock where we oversowed a variety of different clovers into the hills last uh, May. And this is what we look like now. So a ton of feed to try and clean up. Ewes have been through, taken out any quality. I have this sort of earmark now for the cows to be uh, weaned onto at weaning time to really give it a real knock around with the tag on the hills to open things up. Just got a quick example of what we're trying to do here is move the clover from where our strong points are when we set seed and take up um, these sort of areas here by letting shutting it up in October. Um, hopefully some of these runners from the plants that are below like that are going to be able to spread into this sort of area and try and replicate what we've got over here just a little bit further on. I mean I think that's what we all want pretty sure that's what all the lambs want too so um, that's the that's the aim and that's I guess the the reason why we're trying to drop this seed is to fill in these gaps and really try and improve our emmy over the whole paddock. So here we are now and at least the weekend we've had the cows through after last time we were um, I did this video so yeah just showing you now basically those ones those little seedlings have now all started germinating with a we've had about 70 mils of rain so um, it's all come away. I'll show you some shots of the country it's just been hammered by the cows and really opened up and allowed for the new seedlings to come away and germinate if you saw the seedlings as in the seeds and the burrs that were on the ground the rains have come and now they've hatched and here comes the bank of um, clover seed starting to fire away so um, pretty exciting and there's a ton coming through we had an early strike early on but then it went dry and uh, it faded out so this is the second crop we are 21st of May 2019 and we are going real dry and unfortunately it's uh, taken out a fair bit of our initial strikes of clover so I'm just sitting up here in the Nikau trial looking at the sub clover that was sown onto the Nikau face um, we had amazing strike had heaps of seedlings coming through but um, a lot of these are wilting back now just straight out lack of moisture and uh, diebacks happening but um, have been reassured that a lot of these will come again once they have yellowed off and died that is it, but as we've uh, sown so much seed in the soil, there'll be a heap still to come. Just using um, some wiener heifers um, to try and keep the um, grass at bay and encourage light for these new plants to come through. Currently got quite a bit of clover popping through and uh, just trying to protect the plants being affected by the overgrazing of sheep. Just got an example here of the uh, grazing we're trying to do with these wiener heifers. We're just trying to get the girls to uh, take the grass out, open up the light for all these clover plants to get up, get established, get to that three or four trifolate stage, and then they are good to go and set. So take out these big clumps and that sort of thing. That'll allow all these plants further in to uh, come away. So sitting in the huge trial area that we oversowed back in autumn 2017, we didn't put any special um, care into this really we just thought we'd try and throw on to quite a hard face a variety of clovers uh, predominantly obviously being sub 
and uh, saw a dramatic increase in the clover content come spring 2017. It was then shut up, but we're obviously set stocked on it now. I guess see what comes away through here. Panning in, you can see that there is a fairly encouraging amount of uh, clover that's coming away. And I've just set up a bit of a cage in, in the paddock to sort of, I guess, assess what's actually there when it um, gets a chance and it's not being chased by all the stock. I just wanted to show a quick comparison of what the face did look like in terms of the pasture content and obviously the clover content most importantly. You know, very limited, I think we're around that 12 to 17 sort of percent clover content. So this is just outside the area that we did the over sowing. And I will zoom over and show you what the other side looks like. So I've walked about 5-10 metres into the area on the same sort of face as I've just videoed before. Showing I guess all this new legume that we've got in here. I mean this is what we want for the lambs isn't it? Quite a dramatic increase. I know where I'd be grazing if I was a lamb. It's uh, early September, 2nd of September, and we've just put out some cages to try and show the difference in the change from now with ewes set stock and a handful of heifers and with calves in here to see what actually grows. So here's a snapshot of the cage where we introduced the new variety. There was around 20% clover content and uh, we lifted that to about 70% after two seasons. So I'll go over to the other cage and just show you the difference in the clover content. Here's the other uh, cage in the 10 metres outside the new variety um, area where we introduced the sub and the white clover. Certainly not a huge amount of clover content. Being in early September with a few ewes and lambs in here has been picked out, but uh, we'll monitor these two cages over the next month and see the comparison between the two cages. Put a cage out four weeks ago to see how that um, introduced seed was going. I'm um, obviously kept the stock off it. The rest of the paddock's been grazed as per normal. I'm set stocking and as you can see, pretty impressive amount of uh, clover coming through. 10 metres from that cage, I'm just showing you the, the pasture composition where we didn't introduce any new clover seed and I guess how that's looking. Very little clover in there, so a huge lift in clover across this part of the face where we've introduced it and managed it accordingly. It's about whether or not you can justify uh, shutting up some paddocks to let things go to seed, so um, decision time to be made um, and let these um, paddocks uh, set some seed.